So our anonymous subscription is just simply a type that has an unsubscribe method on it that we can call in our ng on destroy method in this case. So now let's go ahead and build our method send message that will send a server message up from the um, our section health here to change the state of some particular server. So what we'll say is we'll have just a method called send message and it will of course take our server message. We're going to invoke our server service and we'll have a method called handle server message that we pass that server message to. Then what we're going to do is simply subscribe to it and let's just log the result to the console for now. We can also log any errors to the console. So we need to do a few things. We need to bring in server message here, first of all. So we'll go ahead and import server message from our shared directory. And I'll just tuck this underneath server. Okay, so now what we can do is write our handle server message method on our server service. So we'll F12 to get over there. And let's go ahead and write our method handle server message. And this is going to take a message of type server message. And what this method will um, be returning is an observable of uh, response. And let's just construct our URL in a constant and we'll go ahead and uh, provide the route to our API call. And from our server message, we'll take the ID. So this is going to hit that put request with a message ID. And the API will be using the message body to determine whether or not it's going to turn the server on or off when it sees the payload of activate or deactivate. So we saw that when we built out the API um, earlier in the course and built that put method on our server controller. So we're going to use HTTP and this time make a put request. Pass the put the URL, the body, which is just our message. And if we like, we can set up some headers. Um, we can send them up on an options property. So let's go ahead and do that. But in any case, when we get the result back, we'll map it to a JSON response that we can see, um, in our case, just in the console to observe that everything went all right. So now we'll head up here and we'll create our options property, which will be a type of request options. This is a type that's available in Angular HTTP. So let's go ahead and bring that in, in our imports. We'll also bring in response and headers. Okay, so we have our request options. Let's go ahead and also create a property to hold our headers, which is the type headers. And then in the constructor for this service, Let's just go ahead and set this.headers equal to some new headers. And we'll just write out some standard HTTP application slash JSON headers here. So we'll just build that out here. We need to say content type application slash JSON. So there we specify the content type. And then also in the header, we can specify the accept header. This will essentially define what type of content that the client is able to understand. And so once again, we're going to specify JSON here. There's something called a quality factor specified by uh, this Q equals 0.8. We won't get into too much of the details about HTTP headers in part because I'm not an expert, but also um, in part because it's not all that important to exactly what we're doing here. In short, this is in some way just communicating that we um, prefer application.json with some relative quality factor. If you're interested in learning more about HTTP headers, then I'll post a link to the protocol here um, where you can read more about the header field definitions.
Okay, so that's how we specify our headers, and now we need to set our options. This dot options is a new request options. And here we'll just say the headers are set to this dot headers. Let's go ahead and wire up our event handler in the template. So we'll head into our section health, and we have as an input our server input. But on our server component, we also defined as an output this server action, which emits our server message up here to our parent component. So what we can do, as we did previously when we were building our pagination component, is specify our event binding server action. And we're going to use this to call send message with that payload, which again, we can access using the dollar sign event for that event. So I'm going to clear out some tabs here and just so it's clear to kind of recap here. So we're looking at our server component. The input to our server is provided by the servers array in the parent component, which is our section health component here. Any given server component has the built in functionality to emit a server action event. So this is defined in the context of our parent component. And so in a sense, we're listening for this event to get emitted. When it is emitted, we call our function send message with the event payload, which in this case is a server message object. Again, we can see that here in our server component. So we have our output decorator specifying the server action as a, an output. Um, we set it to be a new event emitter that will event the server message type. When we click a button, in our server component, let's take a look at the HTML. We call this send server action. Let's take a look at that. The send server action method logs send server action called to the console. We make the component loading. We build the payload based on the current state of the is online value on our component. And then we emit that payload via our output server action. So that gets broadcast to the parent component here where we have a listener for it. So when that event is emitted, we catch it here. Um, so the server action corresponds to the server action output on the server component. And we call send message with dollar sign event, which is the server message here. So send message gets called. This is defined again in our parent component here. So let's take a look. Send message gets called. We make use of the server message that gets passed to that method. We pass that to a handle server message in our service layer. And then if we get some response, which in this case, we just create a no content response. We don't get anything back from the put request. Um, we can log it to the console. So it's kind of meaningless. This will just log a null here. But what we could log instead is say something like message sent to server. Otherwise, we could console log some error. So if we take a look over at our page now and we inspect, just head over to the console. Let's go ahead and shut down the dev web server, for instance. So we shut it down, message sent to server. We get this loading message at first. And then after our five second interval that is constantly running in our system health component, we get an updated server. Um, the dev web server in this case is now offline. So we see the logged message sent server action. And we see the message that we sent to the server, which had a payload of deactivate because our server was online at that time. If we'd like to turn it back on, we can see that we sent the message for the payload activate up to our server. So our put request is essentially returning us a completely updated object for this server. And we can see we can do multiple of these at a time. And then on the five second interval, everything will get updated. And we see the new state for this object in our database. The other thing that's neat about this is that we could run this in a completely separate session. So if I run this here, note that when I make updates in one session, they are also reflected in any other session that's running.
Okay, so that more or less sums up our Angular dashboard application in .NET Core 2.0 Web API course. So we covered quite a lot in this course. We created a dashboard page using some visualizations with Chart.js. We looked at how to wrangle data into some relatively complex data structures uh, from an API. We actually built that web API using .NET Core 2.0. We looked at how to output data from uh, what gets returned from our Postgres database uh, via calls to the web API for things like orders in our system. We create a pagination component to return only the data we need to the front end. And we created a sort of system health dashboard to look at the state of various records in our database and wire up um, an Angular application to create put requests for them to update them asynchronously. So all in all, we covered quite a lot in this course over a relatively short period of time, considering the amount of content. I certainly hope you got something out of this course. Be sure to get in touch if you have questions or comments about it. I'd like to thank you for taking this course and wish you the best of luck on your journey for learning web development and Angular.